Hello and welcome. This is a part 5 of pricing management module overview. In today's video, we will be talking about discounts, concurrency modes for discounts, and budget funds for discounts. First thing we need to review are the discounts price component codes. So right here under pricing management price component codes, we have defined two codes with a discount type. The first one is called region discounts. It has an attribute group called customer basics. And the second discount is a segment discount and it has an adjustment header attribute group. If you are interested in learning more about how attributes can be used to define sales prices, price adjustments, and discounts, please review the first three videos from this series. Then we will add these discount codes to our pricing structure. Navigate to price component code setup. And in here on the bottom, we have assigned these two codes with priority 42 and 45. And you will see that this pricing sequence priority will play a factor in how discounts are applied and compounded. And then we will review three discounts that we will use for this demonstration. Navigate to discounts and all discounts. In here, I have three simple discounts. There are several types of discounts, including simple discounts, mix and match discounts, threshold and quantity and free item. We will not go into detail on how each of those types work. They're very similar to existing retail discounts. There are a lot of nice features that are available to us when we set up these discounts. What I like about it is we can define advanced validation types. So this way we can control not only the dates from two, when that discount should be applicable to a sales order, but also define specific time ranges within the day. There is also maximum amount or maximum quantity per sales order that we can uh, define uh, for each discount. And because these discounts are part of the pricing management module, they're defined for specific attributes. These attributes are determined by component code that have been assigned to each discount. The status for all three discounts so far is disabled. Now we will have this sales order as our testing grounds. We have a single item on it. The sales price is 100 and currently there are no discounts that are applicable to that line. Let's take a look at the first discount. This discount is defined as 5% off. There are several types of discount. One of them is percent off, then there's an amount off and also the unit price. So you can use a discount to override a sales price. In this case, we have a 5% off for any customer that belongs to distributor segment. And the sales order that we will be using for this demo belongs to a customer that is a distributor. So let's go and enable this discount, come back to our sales order. And all we have to do is recalculate the pricing. So click on recalculate button right here. And we see that we have $5 off and therefore the net amount for this sales order is $95. So pretty straightforward. Now let's go back to our discounts and take a look at the second discount. It is also assigned to the same component code segment discount, but this discount is for an attribute order campaign and it is for order campaign promo one. The sales order that we're working with belongs to the same promo one campaign. This discount is 10% off. We will enable it, go back to our sales order and recalculate. Now we see that the 10% off discount was applied, but 5% off was not. So that is when we need to talk about the concurrency modes that are available on each discount. You can see that the concurrency mode for the second discount is exclusive and for the first discount is exclusive. So both discounts are exclusive. In this case, the system would apply a discount that provides a better value to the customer. That is why the system took 10% off and not five. Let's explore other concurrency modes that are available. In order for us to change the mode, we will need to disable a discount, select the value. In this case, we will try the second value called best price, and then we will enable discount back. And we will do exactly the same thing for the second discount. So now both discounts have a concurrency mode of best price. Go back to our sales order and do recalculation. 10% off were still applied. That is because the 10% off provides a better value to the customer, best price to the customer, hence it was applied. To prove that, we can temporarily change the percentage off for the second discount from 10 to 3. Change percent off to 3%. 
and enable that discount back. Then go back to the sales order and do recalculate. Now we see that the 5% off discount was applied and not 3% off. Let's go back and change that discount back to 10%. Now we will take a look at the third concurrency mode called compounded. So select compounded and activate discount and do the same thing for this one. With both discounts set to compounded, we'll come back to our sales order and click on recalculate. Now we see that both discounts had been applied. That is because the concurrency mode has been set to compounded for both. Then let's take a look at the next mode called always supply. Change to always supply the first discount and always supply for the second discount. Go back to our sales order, recalculate. Both discounts, 5% and 10% off have been applied. And finally, let's take a look at the final concurrency mode called price attribute combination rank. So we change both discounts to the price attribute combination rank. This concurrency mode should respect the rank of each discount and apply the discount with a higher ranking. In our case, they both belong to the same component called segment discounts. If we look at it, it has a single combination rank on one side, and then both of those discounts have the same rank. In this case, the system will apply both discounts. So let's just test that. We can recalculate, and both discounts have been applied. But if the discounts had different ranking, then the one with highest rank would be applicable and others will not. Of course, interesting things start to happen when you have different concurrency modes on the discounts. You should experiment with it yourself. There are very interesting results that you're gonna get. What I liked is when we changed the first discount to exclusive and changed the second discount to always apply. So I think they're kind of in direct competition with each other. One is saying I'm exclusive, hence only that discount should be applied. But also there's another discount that says I should always also be applied. What we get in this case is two discounts applied, but they start to compound. If we look at the price details, so first we will see that the exclusive discount of 5% is applied, reducing our sales price to $95, and then always apply discount will kick in and reduce that amount by 10%, making it $85.50. Let's go back to our discounts and change them back to the ranking. Now we can talk about the compounding. That term is kind of used in multiple places here and it becomes a bit confusing. Uh, so we already talked about the compounded as the concurrency mode, but now we also need to talk about compounding the original price or compounding the price after a discount. Now our sales order, if we recalculate it again, should be back to $15 off. So we apply 5% off $100 and then separately 10% off $100. Hence, the total discount amount turns to be $15. But that is because our compounding was set to compound the original price only. And we can change that behavior under pricing management parameters. Let me get right here. Go to pricing discounts. And here under discount compound behavior, you see that the option for compounding the original price was used. If we change it to compound and save that change, now we will recalculate and we will see that the behavior changes. So now we apply 5% off and then on that reduced amount, we apply additional 10% off. That is quite an important setting that controls how the amounts are calculated. Let's change it back to compound the original price. And now let's go back to the list of our discounts. And let's introduce the third discount. Uh, this discount was set up for a different component code called region discounts. So now we have three discounts coming from two different component codes. This is a discount for North America customers. The customer on our sales order is from North America. And this takes off 20%. So let's enable this discount and test the behavior. Go back to our sales order and let's click on recalculate. Now we see that $20 were taken off that sales order. So only the third discount of 20% off was applied, not the first or the second. Let's understand why. We'll need to navigate to our pricing structure again and see how these two were set up. You see that there is an option that says use best price. So that is when the system calculates a discount for the first group, $15 off, and then for the second group, 
$20 off. And then it uses the best price method to apply one of those. In this case, $20 off because it gives the customer a best price. But we have another option here called compounded, right? So this is just adding to the term compounding. So if we change this to compounded behavior and go back to our sales order, do a recalculate, we now see that the all three discounts have been applied, 5, 10, and 20% off. That is because we asked the system to compound these two codes right here. We can also override that behavior using parameters. Again, let's go back to our parameters and prices and discounts. In here, we see three options. The option that we used before was the best price and compound across priority. That is why the system respected that setting on the components code to decide should these components be combined together, compounded, or only the best price from one of those components should be used. But we can also change it to this never compound across priorities. This is a warning message saying the pricing will change on existing sales orders. We're gonna click OK. So what that option says is we will use only discount from one code, not from all the codes. We will never compound across priorities, across different codes. So let's go back into our sales order and do recalculate. We now see that 15% off was applied, but not 20. Why 15, but not 20? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to look at the sequence of these two codes in our pricing structure. Here it is. We have a segment discounts for which 15% were defined, has a sequence of 42. And then the region discounts for which the 20% off was created has a sequence of 45. So the system grabs the discount with lower sequence and then ignores all other discounts because we ask the system to never compound across the codes, across the priorities. In order for us to change that behavior, we can change the sequence on the second code to save that change and go back to our sales order and recalculate. We now see that 20% off from the original discounts were used and 15% off were ignored. We can also go back to the parameters and use the third and final option here, which is asking the system to always compound across priorities. So no matter which one is higher sequence, lower sequence, we're asking a system to calculate discounts for all the codes and compound them together. Go back here and click on recalculate. We are back to $35 off that sales order because all three codes have been added together because of that setting. So this is an overview of the concurrency modes that are available to us on the discounts. There are a lot of possible scenarios there, so I encourage you to experiment with the system. We can have multiple discounts applicable to the same sales order line, so understanding the behavior and the business logic that controls how these discounts are applied and calculated will be quite important if you would like to use the functionality from the pricing management module. And in the last topic of this session, I would like to talk to you about the funds that control the amounts that will be available for the discounts. Let's go back and click on the fund control funds. And here we have two funds that have been closed. So what I'll do here is I will create another fund for a single discount. So I will click on new and I will say it's gonna be a fund for $500 budget. In here, we will need to change the fund type to discount. We will need to define the start dates and end date. We will also need to set the currency. Optionally, you can define the usage, which is just a reporting field, let's say budget Q1. In the funds budget, it will enter $500. And then we need to add the discounts under lines. And here I'll keep it simple and add only that first discount that we worked with, 5% off distributors discount 101. Optionally on the bottom, you can then assign a customer hierarchy. So all the customer that belong to that hierarchy will then be, be part of it. And for each of those customers, you would be able to allocate a portion of that $500 budget. This is optional, I'm not gonna use it. so. All the customers, all the sales orders should be a subject of this fund control as long as discount 101 is used. Then I go back and disable two other discounts. So only one discount should be applicable to our sales order. Now I will activate my fund by changing the status from planning to approved. You'll see this warning message. You can just ignore it. And now we need to understand how we commit to that fund. So in order for the sales order to be committed to that fund, 
we need to complete a sales order. So complete a sales order is a function that is available for call center sales orders. Uh, I did not make it work for a standard sales order because there is no complete function. Once you complete a sales order, budget transaction should be recorded. So here's our sales order. We see that the discount applicable is $5. And now we will click on the complete button right here. Click on submit. Now let's go back to our fund and let's take a look at the funded sales transactions. We see that we have used $5 of our $500 budget. If we go back to our fund, refresh it, we see that uh, order balance is $495, ordered amount in use is five, and because we did not invoice that sales order, the invoice amount is zero. Now I'll show you what happens if we push it over the limit. So we will come back to the same sales order. I will click on modify to put it back into the uncompleted status and I'll increase my quantity to 200. So that should give us $1,000 discount. Let's take a look at the price details. We see that discount was calculated as 1,000, but remember this discount is a subject of the fund, so that discount should be decreased. That will happen once we complete that sales order. Let's click on complete, and let's take a look at price details again. We see that the discount has been recalculated to be $500. Now we can go back to our fund and let's take a look at the fund transactions. And we see that we have used all $500 of that budget. And we can see, if we refresh the screen, we see that the order balance here is $0. So effectively, even if the system will calculate any discount against the discount code, when we complete the sales order, that discount will be recalculated and reduced to zero. Unfortunately, there are no warning messages that tell us that, so it will never push calculated discount over the allocated budget. I think this is quite interesting functionality, fairly new, and I think it will be beneficial for a number of different business scenarios. So we just covered different types of discounts, the concurrency modes that are used with these discounts, and the budget control for these discounts. I hope you found that video useful. Until the next time, take care.